In this tutorial, we want to do a detailed introduction to creating locations and deployments with RapidMiner's Model Operations feature. Model Operations is a one-click approach to putting models into production via its seamless integration with AutoModel. As such, it is an enriched alternative to the well-established process of deploying models into RapidMiner server from Studio's Design View. With model operations, you can deploy to local but also remote locations for which you need to have a RapidMiner server installed. We will get to the remote part in a bit, but first let's start with a local deployment for which we have to define a location first. We are asked to provide a name and description. Keep in mind that you may end up with multiple ones, so don't make it too generic. Now, this second step is a very important one, and you should ask yourself the following questions before choosing. Will this deployment need a web service to be part of a production process? Will there be collaboration with others on this deployment? Is this deployment going to run continuously or for a longer term? If the answer to any of these is yes, then you should choose remote. On the other hand, if you are creating a space for your own deployments, which you use to score data in batches, then local is perfectly fine. In this step, the repository browser opens, and we can select or create a new folder representing this deployment location. In case you don't create a new one here, please note that you can only select an empty folder. Despite the fact that this is a normal folder, we urgently recommend to not change or store anything manually within folders which are used as deployment locations. You can choose any name, but it makes sense to use one which matches your location's name. We won't activate monitoring for now, but we will come back to it shortly. With the location in place, the next step is to create a deployment within the location to which we can then add models. Apart from the name, you also need to identify what kind of machine learning model you will have this deployment execute. If your predictions will have class labels like true or false, then you are doing a classification but if the output variable takes continuous values, then you need to choose regression. We will stick with classification here. As we click OK, we are dropped into the Locations Overview page, showing our first deployment within this location. As mentioned, the next step would be to add models to this deployment, but I want to show you the difference between each location type first. So let's create another location, which is again local, but with monitoring, and then after that, we'll look at a remote one. All right, now first the local one with monitoring. As planned, we set it to local, and we create a folder with the same name. And we activate the monitoring, and now we can select the connection and create this local monitored location. As we now have two locations, we can use the selector here or the Manage button to change things related to our deployment locations. Take note here of the option to Forget. This will disconnect you from a location without deleting anything. A location which you forget keeps being available and, as needed, you or anyone else can reconnect to it, and that is really handy for POCs or a handover or for a deployment in production, which you just want to check in every now and then. So, after leading with it, this is exactly what we are showing you now. We are connecting to a monitored remote deployment location which contains an active deployment. Since it is a remote one, we need to access a rapid minor server repository to which we connected our studio previously. Before we click connect, let's see what is in this location. We see the settings table for the location, which you could take a peek into and we can do the same for the settings of the deployment. Then there are folders that contain models which have been added to this deployment and other sorts of associated files. Again, I want to emphasize that even if you have access to the folders and their content, you should not store, delete, or change anything here. To finish connecting to this remote location, we simply select the location folder and voila. Okay, now let's recap. We have one local location without monitoring to which we added a deployment, but we left that empty. Then we have a completely blank location, which is also local, but has monitoring turned on, 
and then the one which we just connected to, which is remote, monitoring on, and it has one deployment inside, and models have been added to the deployment. In order to compare now how the different settings look and operate, we will need to amend the two local locations with models and deployments respectively. We will start with the scenario that we want to do a proof of concept to see if machine learning will help us to assess credit requests. I am starting with a fresh deployment in my local, unmonitored playground to create a pilot. The next step is to build and add models with RapidMiner's auto model. I'm going to use this data set from the training resources to keep it simple. Now we'll go through this process of modeling quickly and we'll stick with all the defaults, also with respect to cost or gains resulting from right or wrong predictions. Also, we will stick with auto model selection on the attributes to be included, and just for fun, we will run it with all the available models. I'm not making you wait and watch the results come in one by one, but I am skipping ahead to when all models have been calculated. Total time on my laptop was just a few minutes for calculating and validating all model types. The model with the highest accuracy is a logistic regression, somewhat closely followed by deep learning and others. As we expand the subsection of a model and click into it, you can see that the deployment button becomes activated. Let me do it again. Okay, now to add this model to a deployment, we can just click the button, give it a name, select a location, and a deployment, and boom, we are done. Let's do it once more with another one. We select the subsection of the one we want, click Deploy, and then we walk through the dialog, and we have completed our first deployment. Given this is our pilot, we could now apply the models to other data, maybe a sample from another date or set of customers from another country. I'll simulate this by just scoring the same data again. In this second step, we get an overview on the data set and a structural comparison with the data used for the model training. The next step provides a summary which helps to see what changed, which data types were maybe adjusted, or which attributes were added. Now, after the predictions are added, we see the error rate, if the data had labels added. Otherwise, we get only the predictions, confidences, and the coloring to explain the predictions. Of course, we can also export our scored examples. However, if we go back to the overview, there is no tracking of the latest scoring meta information, like the time it took, and so on. Sit back and enjoy as I do all the same things which we have just done, but this time with the local deployment, which has monitoring turned on. I'll take a shortcut and just repurpose the models which were trained by Auto Model before. Make sure to select the right location and deployment. And one last time with another model. You can see immediately that things have changed in our deployment overview as more tabs have become active, which are now available since we have monitoring enabled. The scoring process stays the same, so we will repeat that again also with the same data for the purpose of this demonstration. Now our data set has the actuals already included, which is why an accuracy can be calculated. When we click on the Models tab this time, you can see how things have been populated so we could keep track of the performance while running through our trial phase with this project. The most flexible deployment and scoring setup, however, is when you use a remote deployment location with monitoring enabled. When I open this deployment, which is about predicting on-time arrivals of flights, you can see that all tabs are active. I don't want to go into the details of model management here, but let's look at least at the scoring options. The Scoring tab here is the same as before, but then there is also this tab called Integrations. This deployment is remote and active, which means you can score data also via a web service. You can see the URL, for example, and actual submission here. We can request a test URL, and when we paste it into a browser and enter our credentials, we can see how the resulting prediction for this flight is passed back. With this nice outlook into a full integration of machine learning into any business process, 
We end our tutorial on locations, deployment, and scoring with Rapid Miner's model operations. Thank you very much for watching.